On those records now, I'd like to talk about the gentleman uh, known as Brian Williams or Birdman. Is that okay? Yes, sir. And through your investigation, uh, did you look into that gentleman's background? What do you mean by background? Um, what he does for a living, his occupation. I know his occupation, yes. Okay, tell the jurors if you don't mind. I mean, he was a music artist and then um, at least owned Cash Money Records. I guess it would be a manager or producer. I don't know the exact title at that point in time, but he certainly owned that and then had artists signed underneath his, his label. Okay. And those artists include people that you've discussed in this case? Ms. Some of them have, have been discussed in this case. At least one of them has been discussed in this case. <laughs> and tell the jurors who that one is. Um, so under Cash Money Records, there'd be the YMCMB, which is, well, without going into that, it would be Dwayne Carter, Little Wayne would be signed underneath uh, the Cash Money Records through the YMCMB. Okay. And um, Birdman Williams, excuse me, Brian Williams, performer known as Birdman, 2920, correct? Is that I believe that is correct, 2920. Just yes, make sure. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is. Okay. Let's talk about those. Using, um, as you said, Jeffrey Williams records that are in evidence under one state's exhibit number 137E, um, if you don't mind, let's do a search for how many times that they, uh, that they correspond or connect, I think is the right word, right? Is that true? I would say just connect, yeah. Okay. Um, if I can ask Haley to do that search and then you help us. Okay, do you see the number there? I do. I, the same issue. It looks like the one slash nine, so possibly nine times throughout the entire document. Okay, and the jurors probably remember, but just for simplicity, Jeffrey Williams' records go from January 1, 2015 to July 15th, 2015, okay. I believe it was. So we have nine contacts, and if you don't mind, we're going to go through those, okay? Yes, sir. All right, so the first contact, if Haley can take us to that. You see where it's highlighted and the jurors, you can help them. That should be item number 1125 or 1,125. Is that fair to say? Agreed. Yes, sir. And that's January 28, 2015? It appears so. And then it's 1905. So you have to do, these are AT&T records. So you have to do the conversion. Is yep. that correct? And minus four. Yep. Yes, sir. So minus four, just do it for them or I could do it. But <laughs> either way, so 19 minus four would be 15. And so converting 15 into um, Eastern Standard Time, or excuse me, from military time to uh, the 12 hour clock, would just be 3.05 p.m. Okay, and that is a one second seizure time, meaning as you looked on your cheat sheet or the at t codes, that's how long it took um, for the... Correct, the dial time would be the seizure time from what we learned and the key, and then the ET would be the, the time of the actual connection or yeah the connection of the phones whether it be voicemail whether it be communication through voice that's just the connection time okay and in this one it shows one second uh, from the the person pressing the send and um and then it had zero so there's no connection is that fair to say yes that appears correct yes sir okay and just for um correctness that would be jeffrey what i'm calling jeffrey's phone i understand that you know, it's the phone that you designate Jeffrey Williams, the 8553, calling the 2920. So calling Mr. Brian Williams' phone. Fair to say? It appears that way, yes, sir. Okay. If we can go to the next one. Okay. And this one is um, number, item number 3758, 3758. Fair? Yes. And again, we're talking about couple of months later, so we're in March 30th, 2015? Yes. And then that one is at 241, if you can do the conversion. Okay, so minus four again would put us at uh, 22, uh, so that would be, what would be 10 p.m., um, but then you obviously you have to convert it from 2200 into Eastern Standard Time, so it's 10 p.m. About 10. 1041, is that fair to say? Yes, at 1041, night. correct, sir. And then now we have a 12 second uh, elimination time from the time the person hit the send. It, it was trying to connect for at least 12 seconds. Is that how the record reads? 
Correct. And then the connection, four seconds, yes, sir. And there's a four second connection. That again, the way I read it, is Jeffrey's phone, the 8553 number calling Mr. Birdman, Brian Birdman Williams' phone, 2920. Is that correct? That appears correct. Okay. Then you have, um, I believe, right under it, do you see uh, the next line? It's th uh, line number 3759. Yes, sir. Same date, and it's seven minutes later. Fair to say? Fair to say. And this is a se 18 second trying to connect, but no connection. It's, it says zero uh, conversation. Fair. Fair. Okay. And then this is the opposite. This is Mr. Brian Williams' phone calling Jeffrey Williams' phone. Fair to say? Yes. And for the juror's edification, through your investigation, do you have any evidence that Mr. Brian Williams is related? When I say related, I mean uh, blood relation to Mr. Jeffrey Williams. Yeah, to my knowledge, no familial relation. Okay. Um, the next contact is right underneath it, 3760, 3760. You see that? I do. And we're talking about the exact um, same date and same time. You see that? I do. And then we have the same thing, Mr. Brian Williams, performer known as Birdman, 21 second, his calls trying to get through to Jeffrey Williams' phone. It doesn't connect. Is that okay? Yes, uh, we see what it did there below, but yes, it, it didn't connect. Okay. It rolled, yeah. the, rolled the voicemail. Okay, and that's the next number. Correct. So that's where, the, like, the, you see the D and the F, so it forwarded to that number, which is uh, going to be at and T's probably voicemail number. And then we see that actually on to the right, where it's highlighted. Yep. Um, yep. We see that it says VM, so it's indicating that it rolled to voicemail. So that's what we see with those extra kind of digits yes. there. You know, this is small print. Can you just point to the jurors what you were just referring to the VM, if you don't mind, behind you on the screen? So these kind of codes right here, that VM in the middle is voicemail. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. The D is for the number dial. F is for the call forwarding. And then we see that that is the actual connected number. And that's likely, we could look in the key and we could look in the information, but that's likely going to be just AT&T's rollover to voicemail uh, number. And again, we see that, that it indicates voicemail. We see that it was the number dialed and number forwarded. And then all that sequence, that is another contact according to the records. That's why we had nine, right? Yeah, I believe that's correct, yes, sir. So they're, they're kind of clustered, but that explains your records. So, okay, you're talking about the 2920 while we see this cluster here? Yeah, like the three, what you're looking at, the items starting at 3758, going through three. I see what you're saying. Those are clustered. Yes, sir. I see what you're saying. So even though it says nine contacts, you know, the contacts could be right up against each other. That's correct. All right. Next one, if uh, you don't mind. The next one goes to actually today, um, nine years ago. Is that correct? May 16th? Yes, sir. 2015. And that's item number 1945. Is that true? Correct, sir. It looks like we went from the call logs to, it looks like, I think we went to the text logs here, the SMST. Mm -hmm. it, it looks like we got a, a different description code there. So this isn't going to be, that's why we're not seeing the dial time, seizure time. We're not seeing that. So it looks like we rolled over to another part of the records. Agent, would you do me a favor, just point all that out to the jurors, if you don't mind, and explain to them, you know, the difference earlier that they've been seeing and what they're seeing now? So it kind of looks different if you're, paying attention, but what we see here under the description, SMS, the kind of old school for text message, and then uh, a T on the end. So the description code changed. We no longer see like the dialing time and the uh, connection time. We only see connection time. So that's just gonna be the time that uh, the, the text went through presumably. Um, but obviously the document just kind of appears different because we rolled over from the part of the document that was doing the call log so now we're into the text log of these records. Is that sufficient, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Um, and then the next one, the ninth one, contact is right underneath it. It's 1946. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. Same time. And it's also Mr. Brian Williams texting um, Jeffrey Williams' phone. Is that how it reads? Yes, sir. So just in summary, we're really talking about um, contact on January 28th, 2015, and March 30th, 2015, where we can show no real conversation, according to these records. 
According to these records, that's correct. Right. These records. I'm not saying they don't have contact. I'm saying according to these records. To these records, yes, sir. On these and, numbers, yes, sir. And then um, we jumped to May 16th for two texts from Mr. Brian Williams to Jeffrey Williams. That's what we got. It appears so, sir. All right. And that should be nine of nine according to the screen. Is that fair? Yes, sir. All right. I'd like to go and, and you explain it to the jury, but ju you went pretty fast. I mean, not, you know, not fast, but <clears throat> earlier when you were um, doing your direct examination with the Honorable Prosecutor, you also gave us insight into a phone that ends in 5979. Do you recall that one? Uh, yes. And if you're looking at something, it's no problem, but just tell the, the jurors what you're looking at so they can uh, follow along if needed. I'm just trying to find it so I could speak accurately on it. Five nine seven nine. You said, sir. If you don't mind, it's your cross examination. There we go. Yes, it's going to be States Exhibit One Three Eight Echo, and then the Echo Alpha, and, and continuing. But yes. Now tell the jurors um, the reason, based upon your investigation, that you sought those records and who they potentially, you know, I understand all the caveats, but who they potentially align with. Yes, so this is the one that I did just a subpoena for. Uh, so did not get location data um, from these records. And then it's the name associated with it is the YSL Duke name as the, the registered um the party, the contact name on it. And, and that's fine. We could talk about that one. But you I said 5790, correct, sir? I, if I did, we because we already talked about that other one, right? Okay. I, I was talking about 5979. And if I said it 5979, okay, I'm sorry. Yes, and then tell us that code as well. That when I said code, I meant I should have said state's exhibit number. Oh, you have more? Okay. Hey, Your Honor, for clarity, can we have the full number of what yes. number Mr. Yes. Steele is referencing? If you could give us the number, please. Um, I, I can absolutely do that. Um, it is 504 5979-5979. Yeah, you know, I don't believe we tendered an exhibit with those phone numbers. I, I don't see up here, Mr. Steele. I think, all right. unless I don't have all of them, I, I don't think we have that one. Okay, well, let's do it this way. Is that number come up in your investigation? Can I refresh my memory by our report? Because if it's not here and we haven't talked about it recently, then. Of course. And I, I'm not telling you I'm right, but it may be around page 13 of your report, if that helps you. And again, it is 5979. Unless I'm looking in the wrong place, Mr. Steele, I don't see five seven or five nine. Five nine seven nine. Yes, sir. It's it's not on page thirteen. I, I don't see that, sir. Give me one second. Your Honor, may I just have one second? Yes, you can, sir. Thank you. What's it? What? <coughs> okay, I was right near it. Page 68. 68, okay. You should have known by my, by my, uh... I started questioning myself over here. Oh, uh, don't question yourself. That was, Page 68. That was nowhere close to 13. And what were you saying the last four were, sir? 5979? 5979, that's correct. Okay, so... 
According to the report, that's going to be another, a contact number for the account associated with Brian Williams, that 2920. So that name is entered into the subscriber information as a contact number for the Brian Williams 2920 phone. Okay. If that gives you. So just for completeness, I want to run those numbers on Jeffrey Williams uh, records, which have already been admitted into evidence. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Haley, if you can help us and show the jury. And again, Your Honor, we're showing States Exhibit 137E with the court's permission. It's already in evidence. Yes, sir. And did you find that number? I know you said it's associated with Mr. Brian Williams' um, cash money. Is that what you told the jurors earlier? It's listed as a contact number for the 2920 account. Okay. And the 2920 is what we just talked about. That's Mr. Brian Williams or Birdman performing. That's that. the number that I had probable cause and got a search warrant for in reference to this investigation. Okay. So yes, sir. And I just want to be complete because it has something to do with Mr. Brian Williams. So Haley, I think just run. You could check it um, according to Jeffrey Williams records. Tell the jurors whether Jeffrey Williams has any contact with the <laughs> association number of 5979 of Mr. Brian Williams. It appears not. All right. Let's go to, um, you know, a person who um, um, you um, had a, through your investigation, a cell number for a gentleman named um, Shannon Stilwell? Um, I don't know if we have it in evidence, but I know the name came up in the investigation. Yes, sir. Can you look at now page 13, if you don't mind? Page 13. Tell me if that refreshes your memory. All right. And what that number is or numbers are. We're going to have to spell out those numbers for the jurors, too, if they haven't heard them before. So uh, if I recall correctly, Shannon Stillwell also goes by Shannon Jackson. Okay. Yep. Correct? Sure. Um, and so that name, I do have a phone number listed. Um, if you don't mind me, just for ease, just reading it off. Yes, okay. please. 404. Just go slow because people are writing. 957-3059 is what we have for Shannon Jackson. Okay. And that's just under the name portion of the report. Okay, does he have two numbers in your report? And if not? It looked duplicative. It looked like it was the same number on there twice. Can you just look closer? And if they are ah. different, just read them both. We'll do them both. So there's a digit change, 404-951-3059, I think would be the other one. So it's same area code, same last four digits. The middle digits have changed. Okay. And, and look, I'm not looking at the document right now, so help me. Yep. First number you just read, or the number you just read, can you repeat that number one more 404 time? Nine five seven three zero five nine. Okay. And then the second number is four zero four nine five one three zero five nine. Okay. All right. We're going to search those numbers. Is that okay? It's your cross examination, sir. All right. Well, I, and I well, appreciate. Well, that. If I said no, do you say no? Would that matter? Um, <laughs> it could matter, actually. Knowing me, it could matter. All right. Um, if Haley can run it. The um, the last four digits are the same, or however, you just make it complete. And she's putting in three zero five nine, correct? Is that the number that you just gave us? The last four. For that's both last, of those numbers. That's the last four. It might need to put in more. Yeah. But it's... Okay. Can you put in more? Of the numbers. Pulled, it looked like it pulled the area code of not the correct phone number. Does that look like the right number? It does. Okay. And how many results on Jeffrey Williams' cell phone records, AT&T, January 1, 2015 through the 15th of July, 2015? Again, for these records, it shows no, no contact for these records. Okay. 
And then I think there's a second number that there, we should we should was. try, shouldn't we? Is that just for completeness? So, and that's the nine five seven three zero five nine. Same answer. Same answer, sir. All right. Okay. Now, I'd like to um, go to Mr. Winfrey's cell records, if that's okay with you. And, Your Honor, that is already in evidence. I hope. Let me make sure, Your Honor. 133E. Yes. Thank you, sir. All right, sir. And may um, Haley put it on the screen, Your Honor? Yes. Okay. And these are going to not be at t records. These are going to be Sprint records. Is that right? correct? That's correct, Sprint records. And with Sprint records, um, explain to the jurors whether we need to do that conversion or if it's going to come up in Eastern Standard Time. So Sprint should come back Eastern Standard Time per these records. Okay. If I recall correctly. Perfect. And that's why the records, I assume, look a little different, just because it's a different company. Is that different company, different way of, of analyzing the data, different key, um, using telling you how to analyze the data? Now, I, I want to use his records because um, you made a decision. You know, you, you didn't, you know, as you walk through this, some of, the, some of it's dark and you shine lights on it through your investigation, but you got... April 1, 2015 records to April 30th, 2015 records. Fair to say? That's fair to say. And you weren't trying to limit yourself. That's just at that time you were targeting the 25th day of April 2015 going to 26th day of April. So you got that whole month. Yes. So the basically like the investigative strategy is I kind of didn't know what I had at the point. We just learned of Winfrey being a potential suspect, got probable cause on it. I'm targeting a smaller window. Once I start expanding the investigation, I then have justification, like probable cause justification to kind of expand some searches. Um, so yeah, these records for him were very specific to that kind of that window of time that I was investigating and looking for. And just for the jurors edification, you did not go back, I'm not, I'm not casting aspersions at all, but you did not go back and get additional records. This is the records we have. This is the record, correct. This is the records I have. I didn't do a secondary search warrant expanding anything larger on him. All right. And I just want you to explain to the jurors from this one month of April 2015, help them understand how many um, entries or contacts does Mr. Winfrey have in that 30-day period? And Haley's going to show it on the screen with your permission, but you're looking at the document itself. Is that fair to say? Yes. There's 97 pages in this document that looks like the complete records, and I'm sure this will be different format, this will tell us. 4,362 is what's highlighted. Okay, and that's within 30 days, so just quick math if you can, 4,362 divided by 30, how many calls is that approximately? <laughs> a day? <laughs> I'm not a math guy. Who, okay. That's hundreds a day. Okay. It'll be safe to say. All right, okay. And these records um, for that one month, for Jeffrey's phone, I just want to show him on Jeffrey's phone, what I'm calling Jeffrey's phone, 8553, fair to say? Yes, sir. So if Haley runs that search, we get one contact. You see that? I see the one contact. Um, she could scroll. Do me a favor, Haley, please show every page. It won't be all that long. I don't see the control F, like the, the box that we had on the other set. And maybe it's just because Excel searching differently. <clears throat> Okay. You see that? that? Yeah, it's only toggling between the two. Yes, sir. And that's item number just for the jurors, 4,297. And it is, um, Mr. you may have to go to the top, but if you, if you know it, if you don't know, don't agree with me. Please don't agree with me. Um, but that should be um, Mr. Winfrey's phone calling what we're calling Jeffrey's phone. Fair to say? And if, if you don't know, just say, I don't That's know. The left column is calling number. That second to the left, which is the middle for the phone number digits, is the called number. So the number they're attempting, basically, they're 
that are connected to. And then the third one is the dial digits is what Sprint is calling it. So oftentimes they'll be the same, kind of the same thing. Maybe something's forwarded. Maybe someone has something like that. So you'll see a difference. But these are the same. So the, the, the number dialed is the number that received or connected to, if we and want the, to say it that way. And the date of that call? That's going to be April 28th, 2015. Okay. And the time of that call? And I know it's military, but then make it into... Yes, yeah, so that's just 2010, but we don't need to do the conversion. Um, so 2010 is going to be 8, 10 p.m. Eastern and, Standard Time. And the jurors may remember, otherwise we could show it again. If you don't remember, but that corresponds with Jeffrey's records of that, that 810 uh, attempted contact by Mr. Winfrey to Jeffrey. Fair I to say? I believe that's correct. Yes, sir. Okay. And then that is uh, the only contact for 30 days between Mr. Winfrey's phone records, according to this, right? That's correct, sir. All right. 